Deus Volt, everybody. So here we're going to talk about a much misaligned, maligned unit. And that's the Bulwarkers from the Dwarves. And I just want to say right off the bat, yeah, they suck. Um, I don't know what happened as far as the the sculpting goes with this particular set of arms. But this is where the the uh the problem starts and ends. <sighs> okay. These that set of arms is meant for this body type. Okay? The the two part body, okay? It's meant for this body type. And I wanted to have this separate uh for a few reasons. And one is to tell you what to do, okay? The first thing you do is you take this Dagon peg, you cut that rat off, okay? Second thing you do is you clean that nub, the sprue nub, right down flat. And the most important is this sprue nub right here, about the back here. You clean that flat. A lot of people, when you see these models, are going to have a raised back like this because they cut that sprue that sprue knob and they didn't you know take an exacto and get it flush or any of that mess so get that bad boy flush and that way you can set everything down and there's no real gaps that's what you do all right i was a little apprehensive about getting these dwarfs because you know i saw a lot of people with these these giant gaps like that and i'm like oh well okay now that's the problem okay and we don't need the, the legs for this, really. Just this goofy torso. Which is nothing wrong with the torso. But let's go into this. All right. So you got that arm that's supposed to sit flush like this. And then you have this arm that's supposed to fit like this. Uh, this really isn't plastic or anything. You can't really snap them into place. You can try to bend them. And then bend them back into place once you fit it. If you can fit it. Bend it some more. Let's see. Will it ever go? Will it ever work properly? And the answer is no. Okay, I got this thing bent pretty goofy. And you would think that I could bend it back into place and it would fit. But no amount of He-Man shenanigans or any of that crap will work with this body. Uh, and we're going to be honest. This dude... You know, I mean, he's aiming it sideways or so. I don't know. Maybe it's like a pose. I, I, I don't know. But you don't do it like this. That's just wrong. And you cannot bend them back. So the way that they come, much too thin to fit on the dwarf torso. Much too thin. So it will not work. Here, you have to find out what will work. Okay. And it's a good thing that this kit comes with a lot of extra arms, all right? Because these metal ones, I'm just going to tell you, clip it there and just keep the lance part. Because that's all that you need of this. It's the only viable part. Now, is it right that you have to do so much work to get these models to work? No, it's not right. Okay, if they sell you models, the Dagon things should be able to be assembled and put out on the board. Uh, if... If I were Mantic, I would throw this sculpt away, and I would only, only give this arm here. Okay, yeah, sure. You only have pikes that are standing straight up in the air. That's cool, because at least people don't have to do a bunch of freaking work. You know, people are going out there using cocktail sticks and stuff like this for these lances. They shouldn't have to. These are perfectly fine. Wonderful. Okay, wonderful. I have two examples here. Boom. That's all you need, man. The arm is a little goofy, kind of looking like he's doing a chicken wing type thing. But, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe you could put a hot dog in his hand or something. Maybe he's going to have a snack or, I don't know, you know, find something you could put in his hand to make that work right. A fence post he's holding up. I don't know. But as he stands, a little goofy. These are rank and file miniatures, so some of these guys can be held in the back. That's fine. So, okay, what you're going to do, you're going to cut the tip of this off. I found uh, two things that I, I did. 
The first one's really complex, actually. And that's this, this gentleman here. Because I wanted to kind of keep the whole, you know, at an angle type thing. You know, some kind of difference in the, the, the unit. Now I'm totally against this. But this is viable if you guys wanted to. You get replacement arms here. And then, of course, uh, these static dudes have those arms as well. So you can do the same with, with either or <clears throat> torso. But what you want to do is you want to put this arm at an angle down the furthest that it will go inside the shoulder joint. So you put it down as far as it'll go. That will raise the tip of the lance as far as it will go to where he does, he's not knocking his own guys out. And he actually ranks up decently. Then I cut it off with a little bit of meat on it at the very the very base of the first finger right there to where he has some some of the, the handle to hold on to and then I glued it inside of his hand okay easy peasy this part here this haft is actually from the the um, two-handed hammers that they have so you just cut the head of the hammer right off boom instant lance haft and I also had to cut a little bit off the top there just to, you know, I sized it up to make sure I didn't have this big, this big goofy handle hanging out. Because if you see that the handle hangs out a bit too much. So I cut a little bit more off. So what I did, glued it on and angled it because it's the thin cement. So it has a little bit of time and I angled it up <clears throat> and I had my piece here loose. And I had it at this end, and I'm matching it up to where it looks straight. And then, once that cured, I just hit the ends of his hand here with some of the thin cement, the capillary action followed the, the, the finger, the back of the fingers, and this haft glued it all together. And then I glued a bit onto his belt and whatnot, just hit it in high points. Is it perfect? No, you can see it's not perfect. From this angle, it looks much better. But that's a lot of work to do. You have to make several cuts and, <clears throat> you know, hold. You need, like, 15 hands to do this. So this is probably going to be a one-off miniature for me because I did find a better way. And let me show you this cat here. All right. So a lot less work involved here. And still a bunch of cuts, pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> so, but he stands straight up. He's not gonna get in anybody's biscuits and gravy. He's a pretty good guy. Okay, he ranks up pretty good. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of the two weapon arms I give you and just cut it off on the flat part here, or just above the the weapon. You're gonna cut the the weapon head right off. Cut it off, okay? Then what you'll do is you'll take your... Actually, what am I doing? I'll show you guys. Okay. There you go. Okay, so you got your little half there. And then I'm going to take it and add a 45. Go around the entire nub. Almost sharpen it like a pencil. Okay, you don't want to lose a lot of the uh, the meat of the the handle here, but sharpen it much like a little pencil. Okay, and also what you want to do? See how it's got this little pommel here. Cut that bad boy off too. All right. And always clean it flat and flush. And if you want to get it even cleaner, take a little sanding stick and get it right down there. Nice and flush. Okay. Do the same thing with the top. You can sand it. 
as well. Okay, and that'll give you a nice, a nice tapered point. Okay, and a flat pommel. Because what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your handy dandy little hammer here. You got several of them. I got another little example there. Okay, and you know you're just gonna chop it down. Just choppa choppa. Okay, and what you could do with that is that is now the new handle or haft of the the uh, pole arm and don't use your fancy plastic trimmers for this but use these blunted ones that can take a lot more traumatic force okay and then what you're gonna do you're gonna sand that flat and I'll use a flat file for that purpose And if you look, I'm just holding my fingers up there towards just, and yeah, you rub your fingers, but you're not gonna file your fingers off to the nub or whatever, but it's a safety precaution that I use, especially if I have a bigger model in my hand or something that I'm not gonna hit another part of the model that I don't wanna destroy any of the detail. This comes in handy and by habit for me if I'm dealing with Rackham models or something that has very, very fine detail and you don't wanna hurt it. See that uh, mirror polish right there? Okay, take a bit more of a dull exacto knife and you're gonna act like a punch. You're gonna get yourself a little bit of divot there. Okay, you see the divot? All right, <clears throat> then you're gonna take your pin vise gonna go down into that now this is hard to hold on to because you're pushing down and this is basically you know I mean you got that little bitty lip there to hold on to but so uh, anyway you get the drift right you're not gonna drill down all the way to the head of the spear here you're just gonna drill down just a little bit okay just a little bit will do you then you're gonna take your exacto knife and you're gonna widen the hole, okay? Widen it, or you could just use a, a drill bit for your pin vise that matches the, oh, where, on God's green earth did I put, here it is, that matches the OD, the outside diameter of this weapon shaft. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna marry the two, male, female, and put them together Okay, if you want them to fit a little tighter, a little closer, you could put it down there a bit more. Okay, now at this this point of me trying to figure out what was going on, it's like, man, I got to do 20 of these guys. So not really 20. I think you have eight or nine of these to do. So yeah, you just put it in there. It will set. You don't want to set it flat on flat because it's easy to snap off. You want this to act like a peg. So you peg it in. And it's only going to sit about yay big, yay deep in there, okay? And then, you know, glue your the rest of your haft on, and you're in like flint. You'll have a dude that looks just like this. Exactly like that. Okay. And then he's ready to rock and roll. You don't have to go out and buy another unit and whatnot. Is it right that you have to do this with nine of your guys? No, it's not right. It's pretty pooptacular. But it is what it is. If they had just given you these hands... That's it, man. That's the that's the one change that this box set needs. Just give more of these arms. Just just give them. You know. Cut this out. Okay, Mantic. Stop stop putting these in the box. These are crap arms. They're they're not they're not done properly at all. Uh, and I wanted to show you guys what I did for the Leadermans. Since I was cutting things up and whatnot. Uh, they come in like this little banner spear thing. So I just chopped the top off of that spear deal and put an axe on there. You know, an extra long pole axe because he's short. So you got to reach up and touch those guys in the head that are like ogres and stuff. You know, it just makes things fair. It's a force multiplier right there, baby. Axe on a stick. You know, big stick. That's what old Teddy Roosevelt was talking about. Talking to the dwarves about carrying the big sticks with axes on the ends of them. 
But anyway, this is how I'm solving the bulwarks. Um, I know that you guys go out and you, you buy other things. Uh, some people use cocktail sticks. Uh, and I've seen some crazy stuff. But, you know, this makes the Mantic models work, kind of, with a little bit of work yourself. Is it ideal? No, it's not. Um, I wish that they just would give, you know, 19 of these. 19 of these and let that the champion dude be the champion dude. And then that's it. You know, I wouldn't mind that at all. It makes it would make things so simple. But this is what we have to do uh, if we buy this kit. So uh, I hope this helps somebody out there. Uh, really, I do. And, you know, you guys just, you know, take it easy, man. Enjoy your, your new year. All right. Bye-bye. Carry laser.